What are mRNA vaccines? They've been a question the public's been asking for the past year and a half. And I feel there's been a lot of videos on the literal mRNA vaccines. However, I feel there's been a lack of what mRNA is, what mRNA codes for in terms of proteins, and what mRNA does in our body. And of course, focusing on the nanomedicine aspect, how mRNA is delivered to our cells in our body. mRNA is messenger ribonucleic acid, and generally it associates with a strand of DNA and is coding for a gene. And a gene in this case is coding for a particular protein. That's not to say that all genes code for proteins, but the ones that are translated to mRNA do. So mRNA needs to be transcribed, where DNA is converted to RNA, and that requires RNA polymerase. mRNA leaves the nucleus, goes through the cytoplasm to an organelle called the ribosome. mRNA is translated to an amino acid sequence based on the free base triplet or codon. The amino acid sequence is built, it forms a polypeptide also known as a protein. There are four types of protein structure. There's primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. The primary protein structure is generally a single chain. The secondary protein structure is either a helix or a beta sheet formation. Often the secondary structure spontaneously forms, and this acts as an intermediate for the tertiary structure. A tertiary structure is defined as having two or more 3D structures with a single polypeptide backbone. Protein quaternary structures do exist, but they involve having multiple polypeptide chains as opposed to building upon the tertiary structure. Here we are focusing on a tertiary structure, COVID spike protein. So the COVID spike protein is something located on the outside of the virus. So the spike protein doesn't cause a pathogenic response, but it can cause an immune response. And this is ideal for when we want to design a vaccine which targets COVID and trains our immune system to detect COVID. An analogy I usually think of is a pen with a pen lid. So the pen itself can be interchanged, but the pen lid is can be used on multiple different pens. So the pen itself can change in terms of the color of the ink, the length, the amount of ink actually within that pen still, and the lid can just be used on whichever pen we like. And this applies to viruses in terms of how we think of spike proteins. We can target for a particular spike protein, which is our pen lid, and that can fit onto many different types of COVID variants. Assuming we choose a very good COVID spike protein or make a very good COVID spike protein, we should be able to cover a wide range of variants that may evolve or develop over time. So I guess the question now is how do we know our mRNA codes for our COVID spike protein? Because mRNA can code for a huge range of things. So the short answer is a lot of lab tests and clinical trials. The initial tests will focus on the DNA, RNA, and the protein expression for the COVID spike protein. So the DNA needs to be vigorously checked so that it always codes and it is reliable in the replication and it is the actual part of the COVID spike protein we want because it could be that it doesn't code for the entire structure so it doesn't elicit a good immune response and maybe it's too long that it's difficult to actually produce and act as a template for our mRNA to then code into a protein. The mRNA similarly needs to have a good replication. That's what's going into our body to then go into the cells to replicate in the ribosome. mRNA will never enter the nucleus. It will only just use our cell machinery to produce this COVID spike protein. Thanks for watching and see you next time.